Hi there, welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled Configuring Native Boot to VHD in Windows 8. My name is Tim Warner. You know, it wasn't too many years ago that if I needed another installation of Windows for testing development purposes, for application compatibility purposes, whatever, that I would have to either procure new hardware, and that's buying, borrowing, whatever, or in later years, hook up a virtual machine or build a virtual machine to accomplish that goal. Now, certainly in 2013, virtualization is still at the forefront, but I think you'll agree with me that there are some cases in which you need another installation of Windows to work with, and yet you don't want to use a hypervisor to accomplish that goal. In other words, you need to boot Windows on actual hardware. The good news is that in Windows 7, as well as Windows 8. And on the server platform, Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows Server 2012 all have a built-in capability to boot from a virtual hard disk file, VHD or the new VHDX file format, without a hypervisor. So you don't need VMware, you don't need Hyper-V. You can boot directly off of a VHDX file. Now to me, this is a much cleaner option than dual booting. I have bad memories indeed of installing multiple versions of Windows on the same physical computer. The way to do that traditionally Additionally, is that you'd need to partition your drive and you'd install one version of Windows on one drive, another version of Windows on the other drive, and then you're concerned with marking partitions as active, all that kind of stuff. And fortunately, all that stuff goes away with the VHD scenario. The main methods or the main use cases for this are, like I said, if you're an application developer or maybe even a systems administrator, maybe you're preparing to pass a certification exam and you want some hands-on experience. Perhaps as a developer, you need to bring up an instance of Windows Server to test your application, but otherwise you want to boot to Windows 7 or Windows 8. Another instance is servicing of VHDs. I guess I left off an E on remote. If you're using Microsoft tools and deploying WIM images and VHD files using Windows Deployment Services, Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit tools, it's nice to be able to boot a physical piece of hardware, maybe a reference workstation, from a VHD, perform maintenance on the VHD live, and then recapture and redistribute the image. And then, of course, we have application compatibility concerns. The high-level configuration for native boot to VHD or native boot with VHD, there's many different ways that Microsoft phrases the technology. I think you know what we're talking about, though. The configuration's pretty straightforward. Let's look at it here on the whiteboard, then I'm going to demonstrate it for you. First, we're going to use either the disk part command line tool or the disk management MMC console to create a VHD file. And you'll want to initialize that virtual disk and create a simple volume on it as usual. Next, you need to make your Windows 8, if we're going to use Windows 8 as our VHD, source media available. This could be mounting the physical optical media, or it could be using an ISO file. The bottom line is you need a path to the install.wim file on that source media. Third, we want to use image X to apply the WIM to the VHD file. And then fourth and finally, we add the VHD installation to the system's boot configuration database. Let's get to work. I'm going to stick to as many graphical tools as possible here. I'm on a Windows 8 Enterprise box. I'm going to do a Windows R and type disk MGMT Dot msc to directly open the disk management console. From the action menu, we can select Create VHD, and we can browse to a location. You actually can save your boot VHD on your system drive. It doesn't have to be on a non-system drive. I'm going to call this Win8 Dev, and it will pick up the VHD extension, unless, of course, you choose the newer VHDX format that gives you data corruption preventive technologies, and also you can support much larger virtual disks. Frankly, I'd recommend you go for VHDX. For a Windows 8 installation, I would suggest at least 30 gigabytes. I'm going to do 35 to be safe. And you also can do auto size on the VHD. That's a great convenience that you don't get with a physical installation of Windows. Let's click OK and provision that VHD. It shows up on our disk list. Here it is. We have to initialize the disk, which I'll use the MBR 
bar, the master boot record. Then we will right click and select the simple volume option and just buzz through this. I'll let F be the drive letter, that's fine. And I'm going to call the volume label VHD boot and finish. You could use any volume label, again, none of that really matters. Next, we want to make sure that we have the Windows 8 source available. Let me open up Windows Explorer. I guess I could just see this from within the disk management console. And here I have in my D drive, my physical DVD drive, the Windows 8 media. We're going to use ImageX for this. This is a command line tool that was part of the Windows automated installation kit. And now in Windows 8, Windows Server 2012, it's called the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit. Unfortunately, you're going to need to download download and install that toolkit in order to pull out the DISM file. Actually, I say DISM. ImageX is part of a folder in the Windows ADK called DISM. And you'll see there's DISM.exe, but there's the tool we need, ImageX.exe. That's literally all we need to extract. And if you have the Windows ADK installed, the path is really, really long. Program Files, Windows Kits, 8.0 Assessment and Deployment Kit, Deployment Tools, and then there's an AMD64 or an x86 subfolder, depending upon your processor architecture. And then, as I said, in the DISM subfolder, you have ImageX. Well, I've put ImageX here on my Windows 8 box. So what I want to do now is open up an elevated command prompt, which I will do here using the so-called Metro tools and I'll navigate to the folder that contains the image X file. I also want to verify the path on my DVD to that boot file. Now on the DVD you go under sources and then if I do a sort by size we want install.wim. Now if you have a customized WIM file that's all to the good. You can do that all day long and another advantage of this is that with VHD boot you can back up your system and restore it just by modifying a single file. It's pretty awesome. But for now now let's do an ImageX apply D sources install.wim, not exe. And F is the drive letter of my VHD. One thing we need to make sure not to leave out is the index number of the image on the WIM file. One is fine in my case. You press enter and it takes several minutes to complete. So go get a cup of espresso, go refill your water bottle while the application process is taking place. I'm also gonna show you while this is happening, if I go to my VHD boot VHD disk, that ImageX is populating that partition with what appears to be a traditional installation of Windows 8, and that's true. Now that that's finished, we want to add the VHD installation to the boot configuration database. This is BCD boot, and then the drive letter of the VHD, Windows, and that's it. So now let me restart the computer. I'll bring up a PowerShell prompt and issue the restart computer commandlet, and let's finish this demo up. Now, upon first reboot, we see this choose an operating system screen. Subsequent reboots will get just the black and white bootloader screen. But it tells us here Windows 8 on volume 4, Windows 8 on volume 2. How do we know which is which? I'm going to select volume 2, hoping that that's my new VHD installation. During the first boot up, you'll be asked to go through the out-of-box experience or Ubi Wizard, where you personalize the system, determine what kind of user account you want to use, etc. I've already done that and restarted. So now now I'm logging into the VHD installation. The final thing I'll leave you with is that there are a couple, at least a couple, good ways to customize the boot configuration database to separate your OSs so that you know what's what at a glance, especially if you're running Windows 8 in hardware and you have a Windows 8 VHD boot, how are you going to separate those? A free tool called EasyBCD is a fantastic way to go. That's what you're seeing right here. You can go to Edit Boot Menu, and instead of just plain old Windows 8, as you see, we can easily rename them, and that's great. You can also use BCD Edit, the Microsoft command line tool, and you can also use msconfig to easily disable boot configuration database options. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.